it, please assist me in terms of recognizing those that I may not be seeing on the pane on my right. Now, with respect to the introduction, I'm not too sure whether we would introduce each one of ourselves or can that be can that be done just to acknowledge all of you i would like just for the chair to guide me on that one thank you chair hello auntie pam no um we don't have time um we will just proceed with the presentations thank you uh thank you mark uh Good morning to all the leaders in the industry. Good morning to uh, the participants on the line. Uh, a very good morning to my chairperson, Roiso Jeha, and also to my MD, Mark. I would also like to recognize all the board members of the National ICT Chamber that are on the line and all the captains of industry that have logged in. Mine is very simple. It was just to welcome you all and seeing that the introduction has been phased out, I would like us then to go straight into the purpose of this meeting, which is the launch of the accreditation and certification services. And this is brought to you by the South African mobile devices distributors and repairers association. This will be the presentation will be done by our chairperson, Mr. Loiso Chira, which does, which in this moment does not need an introduction. I would then hand over to him to please present to us uh, the session. Thank you. Uh, can you please present, Chair? Thank you, and Pam. Um, first, let me start by welcoming um, all our guests. I think um, just for the purposes of two minutes, um, those who do not know my face, um, I will just show it, but I'm going to go back to the presentation as the, um, the video sometimes dis um, disrupt the presentation. Um, and so doing well, Can you please unmute yourself, Loiso? You have <laughs> muted yourself, thanks. Oh, sorry. It happens to the best of us. I was saying initially I will um, show my face just for a few minutes for those who might not know me. Um, and uh, welcome to everyone, um, especially our guests who've been with us throughout this journey. I see our partners, MICT CETA, um, partners from the Department of Higher Education, um, Science and Innovation, uh, from the Gauteng Economic um, Development Department. Um, I see CEOs of uh, entities, of, especially in the DCTT, and um, I'm informed that our learners, um, who would be our SMMEs, are also together with us. Uh, with that, I, I, I welcome everybody. Uh, I, I did hear that let's not go name by name, otherwise I will take an hour acknowledging everyone. But um, you are all welcome. Thank you very much for joining us in this journey. For us, this is part of um, a journey that we've started, I think, uh, two years ago. Uh, and Pam or whoever is doing the presentation, can we please put the presentation on? Um, yes, and I think this is one of the, the, the cogs in the journey that we, 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 we've been um, traveling. And before I get into um, the presentation, while they're sorting a presentation, I see Bongani, your hand is up. Is there anything you want to address? Mark, can you please check if there's anything that Bongani wants to address? because the hand has been up. Mm, 
we will, I, we will I, check. I, I think it's a legacy hand that's been up even before we started the meeting. So you can proceed, Chair. All right. No, thank you very much, colleagues. I think the purpose of today, as I was saying, it's, 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 it's for the launch of the accreditation and certification services. Mark will go into more of the detail in terms of the accreditation and certification. My role really is to just make sure that as we travel in this journey that we've started as Sandra, initially from the chamber, um, everybody is with us in terms of what we are doing. Um, I'm assuming most people who are here understand by now what Sandra is, but I think I'll just take a few minutes just taking you through who we are, what we do, the purpose of why we're doing what we are doing and what we are planning to achieve um, so that we can uh, make sure that as we travel, we're always taking people um, um, with us. Please move to the next slide. Um, and really the introduction is what is this? What is the motivation for us um, to, 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 to have started Sandra? Um, Sandra from um, from where we're sitting, it, it, it is a professional body and it's been in the process of becoming a professional body, which is, as I, was, I said initially, this is one of the courts. And what it's trying to address in this mobile device repair and distribution um, um, industry is to make sure there is accountability. Just to talk about the issue of accountability a little bit. As you may all know, um, the industry is, is, as it stands now, um, is mainly uh, um, um, dominated by foreign nationals. Um, there is no accountability, meaning if you take your device, be it a laptop or, or whatever mobile de um, device it is, um, if it gets repaired and the, the repair is not done properly or it gets damaged further um, as, a, a, as a customer, you actually have no recourse. Um, it's between you and that particular mobile device repairer. Um, and what we're trying to do is to make sure that as a professional body, those that would be our members um, um, would then be accountable to somebody, which is ourselves, and but at the end to the customers. Um, and we would make sure, and we'll do that by making sure that there is a quality of service. First, from the fact that um, as we certify them, we these people we would know have been properly trained. Um, secondly, as part of the distribution, we would ensure that they um, um, use uh, quality and, 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 and proper um, um, equipment tools and, um, and, 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 and uh, components. And if something does go wrong, that there is actually recourse that the, 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 the person can, um, uh, or the user <clears throat> can be able to get through Sandra. And all in that, obviously, it will improve trust in the in those that are Sandra members, um, so that they can have more market access, create jobs, and and and, and continue. And that's really the essence of the professional body part of of, of Sandra is to ensure that um, there is accountability, there is professionalism of the mobile device industry, both for the purpose of benefiting the businesses themselves. Um, in terms of uh, them offering that service and uh, to also benefit the users to ensure that they can go to uh, businesses that are accredited by somebody and that there would be recourse if something goes wrong. But on top of that, they've been properly trained and the equipment um, that they are using, including the, um, the, 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 the accessories and everything is actually of a standard that would even be approved by the by the OEMs. Next slide. Um, we, where, where does this come from? Um, the, 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 this comes from the ICT SMME chamber and in really um, um, what, what inspired it uh, from us was to look at a number of things that could um, make a difference in the industry instead of us going to government and things like that. We looked at the mobile device uh, value chain um, as one of the value chains, and that's the one we thought we would focus on, starting all the way from um, <clears throat> from the manufacturing of the mobile device to its de de decomposition. We felt that um, 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 South Africans are not playing a, a meaningful role, and we thought, how do we as a chamber 
ensure that South Africans and mainly uh, SMMEs can play a role in this mobile device industry. That's really where Sandra was born. Um, obviously, we had to start somewhere because uh, we are not in a position as um, um, South African companies, specifically SMMEs, um, to manufacture. So we had to start somewhere looking at this entire mobile device um, 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 uh, value chain. And we decided that we're going to focus on um, the repair and distribution, which was an industry that we were already realizing it was going the same route as the spaza shop um, industry in the country, where foreign nationals were literally taking over. I don't want to go into detail in, in what can go wrong in that, including cybersecurity issues, but that's really the background of, of where, where, where this came from. And the initial focus is at, as as we stand on the on the on the repair and distribution, and at some point we will and we have started that work of going into the other areas of the value chain to ensure that South Africans fully participate, but not only to the participate from the economic side, even the 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 users actually benefit from a quality service. We can move. Um, we, we've, we, we, we've had quite a lot of um, uh, partners um, in terms of this journey. Um, please go to the partner slides. Um, when we started, we were actually um, um, launched by the department of, which is DCTT, and the department in the Ministry of HESI, which is Ministry of Higher Education um, and um, Science and Innovation. Um, through that journey, we were able to partner first with the MICT CETA, which remains our partner for, 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 for the training side, um, which provides funding for the training that we do. As I said initially, um, before we could even start these small businesses, we needed to ensure that we develop a, 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 a course which would enable our accredited um, uh, repairers to provide a service that we can all be sure of that they can actually do what they, they are doing. Together with MICTC and other partners, we were able to develop a qualification, um, which uh, the full qualification will be out. I think when Kuku speaks from the MICTC, she will be able to explain. But we did quite a lot in looking at what goes into um, um, developing a, a, a course or a, a qualification that would enable. That's actually what we are already offering, although it will be um, 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 available um, to the rest of the public and Google will, will, will explain that. So that's, that's the partner that we've started it with, but we've moved from there. Um, we've also partnered with CEDA and CIFA from the Department of Small Business. And the aim there is that we obviously we're not a Sandra training um, 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 people to just be trained. We are looking at the value chain, taking them from being learners to ensuring that they can establish their businesses as SMMEs and then after support um, to make sure that they can remain businesses that are sustainable. So in that journey, we also then partnered with CEDA and CIFA and the role of CEDA and CIFA starting with CEDA is to ensure that once the technical training part has been done, um, CEDA can look at train. CEDA then trains them on the on the on the on the business side, so that they can actually be able to run a business as entrepreneurs. And once that has happened, CIFA then comes in to fund um, the 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 actual starting and running of the business. But even with that, we we also uh, note that it would not be enough because both. All of these three partners, MICT, CETA, CEDA, and CIFA, would not be able to do the necessary scale um, to ensure that we can have enough of this throughout the country to have the impact that we require so that we can really own this industry as South Africans. So we had to look outside of just this, the partners that we have um, to make sure that we can scale this to a level that it, it can really make a, a difference and the impact that we require. To that extent, we've partnered first with the Department of um, Economic Development in Gauteng. Together with them, we are running a Gauteng program um, that would ensure that 
even in Gauteng as part of the township economy, um, 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 uh, township economy development program of, 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 of the province. Uh, and we've played in that cork and we, we're working very closely um, with the department to make sure we can do that in Gauteng. We are also talking to other provinces to um, add additional support um, um, to make sure and other agencies, UIF, NSF, and that's just to do the scale. We've partnered with a lot of um, colleges to make sure that our training is done in the colleges. And the real aim is that in the end, colleges, once the MICTC certificate is up, can continue with the training so that we can focus more on the distribution and the after service part, as, uh, as these would be our members, to make sure that they've got sustainable business, which is why we have partnered with um, the, the TVET colleges in delivering this work. We've had other partners. Um, it would be difficult to mention most of them, uh, but it, it is a partnership. It's not something that we think we can do on our own. Um, we've got our technical partners like Microlec, um, who are assisting us to deliver the training, but we've been having quite a lot of partnerships that are assisting us in this journey, and I probably would not be able to mention them all, but they are all acknowledged. We can move. Um, and, and as I was explaining that, and that's really our operational model, is that Samdra together with its um, uh, partners, um, we put resources together and the real aim in the end, we, we're not training, as I said initially, it's not a training for the sake of training. Uh, it's not a tick box exercise. Our success would be how many uh, mobile device uh, stores do we put in there and how many of them remain sustainable. And to that effect, we are even talking to the MNOs to make sure to the insurances that the MNOs work with to ensure that as much of the work um, that is in the industry, um, our members would be able to access so that in the end, um, our output would be um, um, mobile device repair stores and those that are not entrepreneurs would be working for the very same SMMEs um, that um, uh, would have been created out of the program. And some of these would actually go into some of the repair centers for the OEMs, and for the MNOs. So uh, our output is SMMEs and jobs, um, and everything else goes into the channel of creating that, and that's really our operating model and our reason to exist. Next slide. You can move. I think we've done too much of the things. And, and on this one, I think uh, um, usually when people talk mobile devices, they usually uh, think cell phones only. Um, our idea of mobile devices, and that's how our cost is structured, is so that it's any really device that you can take. It's a full electronics uh, cost, but we take only the part that has to do with mobile devices. So, so you would have heard a lot of uh, people being trained for cell phone repairs. It's not actually the same thing. We're not training uh, young people to open and close cell phones because that actually at the end damages the phone. We ensure that it's actually an electronics course. Once the MICT certificate comes out, you will notice that it's sitting at NQF level four, if I'm not mistaken, but it's it's exactly a, 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 an electronics course. So somebody would be able to fix basically any mobile device, whether it's tablet, laptop, and some wearables. And we really take pride in the quality of the of the training that, that we conduct. As we said, it's not just the cell phone repair, um, 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 training it's an electronics uh, um, uh, 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 training now that the qualification has come out people would be able to build on top of that into even a, a um, higher nqf levels um, as it would be able to be upgradable from there next slide yeah so so there are three um, or four areas that we are focusing on i did touch on it a little bit um, the, the first part is obviously the, the training, qualification, um, and certification, uh, which is done in partnership with MICTC, Tachiocity, or NSAQWA. Um, and really, our role there would be to manage the not just the certification, but also uh, part of what we are doing now is to even be in a position to issue occupational certificates with SACWA and in certain instances be even uh, be able to do RPL. There's a lot of people who've been working at these um, uh, MN, uh, MNOs 
in repair centers. There's a lot of people who've been working at the um, 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 uh, the 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 OEMs in their repair centers, but most of them do not have a qualification, and we seek to really assist uh, 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 those people by making sure that we can RPL them and be able to give them occupational certificates so that they can be able to further their studies and they can have something that they can take with. And that's really a big part of what we, we want to do in terms of professionalizing the industry. We know there are a lot of people in the industry who've been doing this work for a very long time, um, but there's just no uh, recognition for the skill that they have. So a big part is uh, um, recognizing the skill that already exists through RPL, which is why we need to do what we are doing today to start the process of being able to register with SACWA so that we can be able to manage that process. Um, and obviously um, uh, continue to develop um, um, the, the this industry of repair with our um, partner, which is MICTC, together with uh, QCTO. The second part is that Yes, you would then have these um, repair um, um, shops all over in townships, um, even in malls and everywhere. But some of the devices or some of the issues that the devices uh, would have um, would not be able to be resolved there. So what then Sandra seeks to do is to create advanced mobile centers close to almost every region so that they can be a referral form if um, they the 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 they get a device that they cannot fix, which needs probably more machinery, then there would be an advanced repair center that they would be able to uh, send it to. And Sandra would then be able to do that. But it would also form as further education. As you might know, the, the, this, this industry moves quite quickly. Whatever training we do now um, um, would need to be updated as we go along. As new devices come in, if we want to ensure that we can fix some of these OEM devices and be certified with them. One of the things they require is us being able to um, continuously train and continuously give information to um, our repairers to make sure they are always um, in, in, in sync with what is currently happening now. The process at the, at the, at the CETA side might take a little bit longer, so we would need to stay up with um, the, the 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 OEMs and that's really one of the part of the repair centers is to make sure that our guys are always um, um, in, 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 in sync with what's happening and they always have the latest training at, from the OEM side as the technology changes and that feeds back to MICTC to, to update the, 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 the qualification but also being able to uh, assist in terms of dealing with the more specialized cases of these devices. The third um, um, component of what we want to do is the is the warehousing. As if I may just go back, my father, by the way, was uh, owned a spaza shop. Um, so so this spaza shop thing is, is close to my heart. Um, on the warehousing part, as we might know, and I'll make it uh, that, that example, one of the reasons, and it's just one of the reasons, that um, um, the foreign nationals were able to outprice um, our um, uh, uh, people in the townships when it comes to spaza shops is that they were able to buy as a group. I am aware that they buy directly from um, uh, um, companies like Tiger Brands, not even from the distributors, and they do the distribution themselves, which means they can price. I don't want to talk to the issue of um, some of the goods being counterfeited goods that that we've seen as well. But even just on the bulk buying, it's something they've been able to do well. So as part of ensuring that um, our members across the country are, um, are, are, are sustainable, we would then ensure that we do the distribution by ensuring that we can go and buy directly from the OEMs um, uh, components but that, that does not only serve that purpose, it only serves the purpose of ensuring that those that use our services can be assured that the, the components that they use are either directly from the OEM or they are OEM uh, approved, um, and sh which is one of the ways we can ensure the quality and distribute those uh, throughout to make sure that um, there's no point where they have a shortage or wondering what to buy where. And that's really part of uh, making sure that the, the, their pricing is correct from a sustainability point of view. It, it, it will ensure that they um, 
uh, use the correct components um, and, and accessories that are approved by OEMs, which then gives it's the it's our way of being make sure that we can give assurance to the end user um, and third side that they can have the equipment at the time that they need it. The, the third part uh, or the fourth part in the last one is to really continue on the business development side in supporting to make sure that not only will they be doing mobile devices, but we put more to make, to make sure that there's business development uh, on things. Just to make a, a, an example, uh, part of what we, we're going to do is to make sure that the very same mobile device um, 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 stores are able to be uh, um, collectors of, 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 of e-waste and be part of that value chain of, of e-waste and make revenues uh, out of that. We are able to go to the uh, um, MNOs on their behalf and be able to make sure that they can be able to sell um, 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 airtime, electricity, and things like that. Uh, I don't want to go more into detail in terms of um, some of the plans that we have, but it's just to make sure that those that in need incubation, they are incubated, but we continue the after support of business development, the systems that they use, so as to ensure that we have businesses that are sustainable and continue to be sustainable uh, throughout their journey. And that's the way we will survive because those will be our members and uh, their sustainability would be our sustainability as a professional body. MRI does this well and, and really, except for additional things, it's almost a copycat of ensuring that that's the, the thing. So we're not just putting the members there, we will continue our journey with ours is until they stop their businesses um, we are with them throughout the way to make sure that they are accountable. What some of the things that we do there is the lobbying of ensuring that South Africans understand what is the difference between using a Sandra accredited, which would be South African just by the virtue of being mem a member of, of, of Sandra and uh, other, uh, other benefits that go out. And I sort of explained this a little bit in terms of the value chain. Um, and 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 in the beginning, when we were planning on how to do this, we looked at this entire value chain. And you might see, go to the next slide. Um, if you look at the, at the at this entire value chain, we said we can't start with manufacturing and R and D. We we will have to go there at some point uh, for the country. Uh, transport in terms of bringing these things there, these devices needs to be financed. There's storage before they even get there. There's retail in terms of the devices being sold. Um, uh, online, uh, on, 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 on OEM shops like Apple or through um, um, the MNOs, the software uh, that is being used is a huge uh, market in terms of apps as we speak. Um, these devices have to be insured. All of that up to um, the end user and protection of these devices, including e-waste. E For us, Sandra is only a beginning and it's only focusing in the maintenance and repair um, on distribution and, and distribution talks to both uh, transport and storage and uh, electronic waste. We need to update the slide uh, because the maintenance and repair goes with transport and storage, uh, which, which then talks to distribution. But we, we the aim for from the ICT SMME chamber when it formed Sandra is that we need to look at this entire value chain. There's already work in looking at manufacturing software and content just to make sure that we put programs in place that will ensure that South Africans participate fully um, in, in ensuring that uh, uh, we gain uh, South we gain a South Africans from this. Currently, we've, we've been just consumers of these things, although in the software and content space, there are apps that are coming out, but not in a manner that um, really uh, um, uh, is of commercial value and, and really as the ICT SMME chamber now, that's one of the things we want to change. If I didn't introduce myself properly, I am the chair of this, of Sandra, but I'm the managing director of the ICT SMME chamber. The ICT SMME chamber formed Sandra for this purpose. Okay, we can move from the slide. Um, again, this, this is the same slide that we've almost spoken to. It's speaking to really what we are doing, um, which is training with uh, the partners that I've already mentioned. Uh, mainly uh, the bedrock for now are the CETAs, mainly MI City CETA. And, um, and in the end, what we are basically doing is to create jobs and make sure we create businesses 
um, out of this, which is not just about repair. There's a lot of other things, as I've just explained, uh, to create sustainable businesses and make a dent in the job uh, um, issues and economic growth. This is a huge industry, by the way, a couple of billions a year. Uh, and all of that money currently, all, most of that money is being remitted out of the country. And that's exactly what we seek to stop uh, and to make sure that some of those jobs can be retained in the country. Next slide. All right, I think when we get to this point, I will allow Mark, who's our managing director, to take us through um, um, what we are doing as so far as the certification of individuals, um, the SMMEs that we are dealing with, and the, the awareness and, uh, and making sure that we can lobby the rest of the public to understand what we are doing uh, to the benefit of both the country and the SMMEs that are participating in the program. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Matt. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Chair. Uh, we really appreciate. And uh, I will just carry on where you left. Um, so. OK, thanks a lot, um, colleagues, and um, uh, thanks our chairperson. Um, we welcome all our partners. We welcome all the lizard leaders in the industry and also um, all the practitioners in the mobile industry and the e-waste um, industry, electronic waste or, um, and related uh, streams. Uh, from this part, I'll just talk and discuss um, on the core of today's presentation because we, from next year, from um, 1st of January, we will be really embarking on recruitment and um, prepare the certification and accreditation for our members so that we move to the next level of our journey. Before we do that, we would want to explain what is okay. I think I did not share my 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 uh, uh, following what our chair did. So I think I'll just a little bit uh, for a moment share my video. Uh, And uh, you can uh, see me for just a few minutes. OK, so my name is Mark, Mark Mpasa. I'm the managing director of uh, the South African Mobile Devices, Distributors and Repairers Association. I will close, then continue for uh, us to really preserve the bandwidth. Thank you for making the time. OK, let me go back to the presentation. All right, so we will start by explaining what is our membership structure for better understanding of how the certification and accreditation fits in. So we at the top, we have two big groups of membership. So we have individual members and on one side and companies and institutions on the other side. Um, individual members can pay subscription or they can be just sympathizers. Um, in detail, so as part of individual members, we have our sympathizers who just love the industry or love what we do and they just want to follow uh, whatever we're presenting and how uh, we're participating in the industry. Affiliates, it's a membership that uh, is uh, sponsors, sponsored by Sandra, basically for those that are uh, graduating from our programs or our approved partners programs, then we give the affiliates that graduate from those programs a one year um, membership for free so that together we can build themselves in terms of people 
and also in terms of the businesses. And we hope that by doing so at the end of the first year, which was free and non-renewable, they should be able to afford um, paying for either ordinary membership or a technical membership. That is part of the membership. An ordinary member is just anybody who is interested in the industry and wants to be part of the SAMRA membership and pays the fees um, uh, based on just that. There is not much um, in terms of conditions. So anybody can apply and if the person fits um, what the criteria will be with with uh, our um, uh, credit, uh, our membership uh, team, then uh, the person will be um, a member. There's 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 some benefits to that, uh, which can be explained later on. A technical member is a person who actually uh, certifies for for a, a is a holder of a certificate of technical nature. Um, among the things that uh, Sandra is doing, uh, mainly in the mobile part and also on the e-waste part, uh, it can be through Sandra itself or through Sandra partners. Then we have SMME types of members who can be oriented in the sales or can be oriented in the technical um, streams. Um, with the sales stream, you need to have at least a number of uh, certificates from Sandra of sales nature, which is non-technical. Whatever is non-technical is considered in the sales group, so you can sell. And uh, SMME members of technical nature will be those uh, SMMEs that really provide technical work. It can be repair. It can be processing of um, electronic waste, so we classify that as technical. Then we have corporate members who have complex um, ownership and uh, they are big. Um, some of them are international companies, so we classify them as corporate. And institutional members are those that really don't sell or don't repair um, anything. So they don't sell, they don't repair, but they do participate into the mobile or electronic waste industry in terms of either education or uh, research or um, just awareness or any other thing that is of interest to the industry. So this is the landscape of our membership structure. Then as part of that, we have uh, companies and institutions um, uh, which must be uh, registered in South Africa. Uh, we need a minimum of 70% ownership for those businesses. Um, it must be South African citizens. And also, uh, so you need to present to us a, a, a South African uh, uh, ID uh, for you to to, to have uh, membership here. And also uh, you need to employ uh, Sandra certified members. The Sandra certified members will be either in the sales stream or the, the technical stream, like, like I explained um, up there. Then all of this is to drive also the transformation agenda. So as part of the SMMEs and the companies uh, and institutions, so we have a one person SMME type of membership, which is just a, a, an enterprise that closes when the owner is not there. So if the owner is not there, it closes, it doesn't perform. And the moment you hire a person to work with you, then you will be considered as a bronze. Uh, type of enterprise and for that you may have up to two branches and also we have then the silver type of enterprise which um, you pay a certain amount and then you can cover up to seven branches and when or shops or branches when we say seven or two it means that also as part of the conditions in each of the branches you have 
a permanent person who is uh, certified on at least one thing from Sandra. So it can be sales or uh, technical the way you want. Uh, if the business is sales oriented, then you will need a sales certificate, which is a non-technical certificate. And if it is of uh, repairing or technical nature, then you will need a, a technical certificate. Then we have a gold enterprise. So the, the difference is um, in the, the amount that you'll pay and the number of branches and uh, shops that can be covered with that type of membership. So you have a choice. Um, you can still pay a gold enterprise and still have one shop or one branch. So it's OK uh, if you don't want to be called silver or bronze. So you can say, no, I want to pay for the gold membership, but I only have one one branch. It's fine. Uh, but you are allowed to have up to 10. So if you choose the platinum enterprise, so you will have uh, from 11 to and unlimited numbers, but then the amount of money that you pay will be based on um, uh, an excess of whatever is beyond 11. It will be calculated as um, price for the one person SMME. So you'll pay the price of 11, then anything above that, it will be uh, an additional fee of a one person SMME per branch. We have the diamond enterprise or what we call mobile device service providers. So it's um, those type of enterprise that have complex um, deliveries. Uh, they do networks, they do e-waste, they do um, uh, process management, they do service management. So they do a lot of things and uh, we call them diamond um, enterprises and they also have their own um, fee. Institutions, like I explained before, it's really those that don't do any sales and they don't do any repairs. So it's mostly education, research and others, those type of activities, and they also pay a membership fee. Then we go to the certification. Um, the chair explained what we want to do, what we're doing already in the, the industry, and we have a lot of people with a lot of skills there, um, and they just don't have um, a certain uh, document that will prove what they're capable of doing, what they know. Yes, we know um, some companies do give um, the 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 staff members a certificate when they have accomplished a certain level of uh, technicality or training inside uh, in, in inside a company. But the, those certificates uh, do not give them any credits in terms of the, the national qualification framework, uh, which is linked to SACWA. So that's what we want to value. We want to value the skills that people have and link it to the national um, qualification framework, and they can then uh, extract more benefit on the skills and knowledge and experience that they have. So a certification which um, a person will have will then verify that uh, a member has a certain knowledge, skills, and abilities, and, and be able to perform a specific job um, in our space of operations. Then that process will then um, also allow some members to uh, be forced. If they want to be certified, they will seek to acquire certain knowledge, certain skills so that they get certified. So they will then attain a certain level of knowledge, then be able to prove it to Sandra. Then we will give, uh, we will award a certificate. Who's doing that? It's um, within Sandra, we created a section called the Sandra Accreditation and Certification Board, which is made of independent professionals that are appointed by our board uh, for between one to three years. So they will run this independently, uh, of course, with the management team, uh, but the decision they will make will be independent and they will then be the people certifying uh, our members. 
Um, the certification will be based on uh, assessment processes that may include exams, tests, um, portfolio of evidence. You need to prove what you've been doing. The chair um, really spent time on the RPL. We want to recognize the prior learning experience and also um, the previous work experience that you had, if a person had and the duration thereof. If uh, we can trace that, um, that will be count that will be counting for the certification process. Um, you will see later on we have codes, um, so it will be a mixture of for some people it will be straightforward. Um, I have a diploma from uh, from uh, a technical university in electronics uh, or in uh, electronic waste management, and uh, I've worked here and there, so it will be straightforward. But but from, for others, it might be a bit complicated to say, I've been working for 30 years in the electronic waste industry. Uh, I've done this certificate, I've done that certificate, so we will be able, so our uh, accreditation and certification board will be able to evaluate such a person and then um, place that knowledge uh, from a person to a certain level and then based on what recommendations um, and criteria we will uh, we have we will link it to a SACWA, um, um, a, a SACWA level of uh, in the framework in the education framework that values the person that person will receive credits um, that will be accepted nationally that is what we're trying to fulfill here so any person who has experience or skills that will fulfill a certain level of uh, recognized uh, by uh, the 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 SACO, the south african qualification authority in the terms of national uh, qualification framework, we will then uh, value that and uh, be able to award a certificate at that uh, level. Why would a person do that? I believe um, we have such a huge um, attendance because uh, people see the value of the certification. A certification will confirm that you know something. It will improve your reputation. It will enhance your, your credibility. People will trust you. Your employer will trust you. The public will trust you um, uh, because you displaying um, a, a, a certain level of knowledge, skills recognized by a third party, which is not you. So that is what the public will trust. And from all of these, you can then increase your, your uh, earning power and, and be happy. Um, that is what we're trying to also uh, move our people to. And uh, more importantly, it is as part of um, us uh, awarding designations, we, we need a person to be certified. Uh, we, 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 like I explained, we taking into account the prior learning experience, but it leads to a certification. So once a member, I'm insisting a member of Sandra, because you need to be a member first before you can be certified and before now we can give you a designation or even accreditation for a company. So what is a de designation? It's a title. It's a title from Sandra, which will uh, then recognize you at the level of your certification. Uh, let's say I'm a, 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 I've been working for uh, a repair company like uh, 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 Loiso Incorporated uh, Repair, which is our chairperson's uh, virtual company, uh, does repairs, and you've been working there for um, uh, 30 years, and uh, you, you, you just have a title of a senior manager there. So um, when we, when our accreditation and certification board assesses your experience and knowledge, they might say that you are a, actually a master technician. So now, yes, you are a senior manager there, but here we consider you as a master technician. A master technician is somebody who has such knowledge that um, uh, it is so detailed in terms of repairing, in terms of uh, coaching uh, juniors, in terms of influencing the industry, so that you will now be recognized in the country as a master technician and you will have credit 
uh, as, as part of that recognition, which are linked to the national qualification framework. If you are an administrator, you've been in a, in a, in a repair center uh, for 10 years as an admin person. You've been doing the books, you've been doing reception, you've been uh, interacting with customers. You've acquired some experience. For 10 years, you've been dealing with that. And uh, our accreditation and certification board will assess your knowledge in terms of finance, in terms of uh, 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 in terms of customer um, uh, management, in terms of uh, general administration. And they might say, because of the assessment, we link you to uh, uh, a services CETA type of, of uh, uh, qualification, which is actually a senior administrator. So those are the type of things that we will have, which will unlock the knowledge, the skills that people have, and link it to existing levels of qualification of certification in the national uh, qualification framework. So now, we, as we give you a senior administration uh, designation, you will be able to work anywhere with that title for that year, because it's only for a year. Uh, you need to renew if you want to renew. <laughs> So you will walk into any office, any employment agency and say, I am a senior administrator recognized by Sandra, uh, and that is linked to a SACWA level of recognized uh, qualification, education. So that, that is exactly what the, the designation can do for you. It's, it's really recognizing your competence, uh, uh, based on a level of certification that will be established by Sandra. Who's going to award that? It's our accreditation and certification board, like I explained before. And how do you uh, obtain the designation? You must be a Sandra member. You must have a certain level of certification. I explained that even RPL can be uh, certified and you need to renew it uh, every year. So uh, based on the membership scheme that we have, and you also need, as uh, um, our chair explained, that we really want people to um, reach a certain level of, of development. Uh, so each year there will be activities, either from ourselves, Sandra, but uh, many of them will be from uh, our partners um, in, the, in the industry, uh, there is other uh, professional bodies that run um, various activities, so we will recognize them as part of um, the personal development and you can gain those CPD points and they will count. So that's why we really invited um, the, even some um, uh, other professional bodies to also come and see what and hear what we want to share because like our chair said, the strength is in partnerships. Since day one, our strength has been partnerships. So even here, we don't intend to do all these things ourselves. We will have private partners. It means SMEs that, um, um, that will become our members for the purpose of just running certain activities, which we cannot run because it's just too big. So we will have partners, that will also uh, make our members to benefit these CPD points. And why uh, you'd like to obtain a designation? It's for your efficiency, like I explained before, credibility, and you can use it for your competitive advantage. We like that in the industry. And also importantly for our lives, we want to increase our earning potential. And in the process, you can expand your knowledge and skills. And generally speaking, it will advance the industry. As we do these exchanges, all these events, all these activities, we are also advancing our industry. Which professional designations are we aligning? We have in the mobile device sales from the junior uh, uh, sales up to uh, entrepreneurs. So there is a whole range there with conditions. Uh, if you are a school leaver or you just um, learned 
from your own. So we will be able to establish through our accreditation and certification board where you fit. In terms of mobile device repairs, also we will have um, from level one up to uh, entrepreneurs uh, type of designations. In terms of repair centers, um, we have administrators. I uh, explained that it, administrators play a big role into these repair centers. And also we found out that um, as we will expand this, there will be a need to build shops, to build repair centers. So we want to have our own uh, members who basically for now, they have that skill. They know how to build uh, structures. They know how to set up shops, uh, but we don't know where they are. So we will recruit such members, evaluate their, their knowledge, um, probably with other professional bodies who specifically do this. But as they become our members, we, if we have um, the need to, to build repair centers, if our members have a need to build uh, repair centers or um, uh, shops, uh, these are the people we'll recommend because they will be already be pre-certified by us. We'll say go to so-and-so because, in fact, they will be on the website. So people will see it on the website and they'll know this is a member. Um, then I will use such a member to build my shop or to build my, my repair center. And uh, right now we have managers in the repair centers. Uh, many of them have been there with uh, for many years and the accumulated experience. We want to value that experience and, and they can also uh, be recognized. And in terms of uh, warehouses, um, uh, the chair spoke of logistics in terms of transportation and storage. There's people that do admin work there. They do finance there. So I would like to recognize them. And also in terms of if we want to build a warehouse, where do we go? Um, we should be associated with people that have such skills, knowledge, so that they help ourselves and our members. And in various capacities, there's a lot of activities in the warehouses, so we will um, evaluate. Um, some of them will be managers, some will be um, a certain level of administration. In terms of uh, electronic waste, um, uh, waste from uh, uh, electrical and electronics uh, equipment. So we have a whole range of um, designations. Uh, every week in our, in, uh, in our communities, we see people collecting um, uh, items from, from our bins. Those items can be electronic. We see um, in many places, uh, companies are putting bins so that people can drop um, uh, electronic waste. Who are collecting those uh, items? Some of them have been doing that for years. Yes, we see them in the streets, but can we value their knowledge? Can we value what they've been accumulating? Can we train them in certain ways so that they do this better than we give them a certificate recognized by our national qualification framework? So that's what we can do. And in those sites where the collecting uh, these electronics waste. Uh, we have people that are doing admin work. How should they do it? Um, there is a certain uh, a stream of activities that can be aligned so that uh, these uh, electronic waste can be collected uh, properly and uh, reported in a way that maybe the apex level, uh, which can be OEMs or any other uh, bodies that would like to receive them. So administrators will be doing, uh, are doing already a great work, which we want to recognize. Then you have a lot of technicians doing various work. Some of them dismantling, some of them really extracting um, some of the materials there. We want to recognize them a certain level. And again, builders, if I want to uh, build an electronic waste plant or just a small, uh, a small uh, what a type of activity, a small site where I want to start 
electronic uh, uh, waste collection or even low level processing, uh, who can assist me in building such a site? So we will go around and recruit uh, members that are specialized in that so that our members will use them, use their, uh, their, their services when there is a need. And in all these sites, we have managers running uh, many types of activities. And also we have entrepreneurs, uh, people that uh, put money, they want to run these activities and make profit. So uh, at the same time, they learn also in the process. So we also want to recognize them. So our designations will have SACO aligned requirements. Um, they will take into account um, the time and the job that a person has been doing. And yes, they will um, be um, certified by our uh, certification and accreditation board, but we can't do this ourselves. So we will also uh, recruit uh, members who will be service providers so that they can, in various levels, train uh, people that want to to uh, be certified to so people can design content which we will give guidelines we'll discuss and they can then train uh, people for the purpose of achieving uh, a certain level of uh, certification let's say let's take the admin again if um, there is some requirements uh, people for people that have a certain level of experience and they're just lacking one or two things one person can design a one day course or a half a day course and and uh, push to administrators so that they can for the purpose of becoming certified through Sandra in the area of their expertise. So those are the type of things we will share with our members who are service providers in various types of activities so that they can run that because we can't run everything. Um, is there any cost? Yes, um, there will be some costs um, uh, through ourselves and also the service providers that we will have who are our members, but they will run services uh, that we agree upon uh, at local levels in different places within the country. There is also trainings that will be recommended from time to time and the format will be also recommended. Um, what is so once you have a, a, a designation, there will be an expectation from you. It's just like when you go to a doctor because the country has recognized that such a person is a doctor, you don't you you expect a doctor to be able to to assess you, to assess your temperature and probably to give you a, a, a pill or a, a recommendation of what you do. So there will be also uh, from any uh, de 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 designation holder a certain level of expectation, which we will uh, uh, also uh, publish to say from this uh, admin uh, uh, designation holder, we expect this from this builder. Uh, designation holder, we expect this. So it will all be public so that our people will know what to expect from the people. And uh, there will be some uh, opportunities that will be offered for the designation people, and uh, that will also uh, be published uh, so that the business opportunities will be listed and recommended. And uh, some of the qualifications that we have um, is if you've been in, uh, if you've been here since the beginning, the chair spoke of the qualification that we um, applied for at uh, MICT CETA in terms of mobile uh, devices. So. I think uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Sima will, Google Sima will talk about it uh, probably, but um, we were happy to run the, the, the activities uh, supported and led by MICT CETA so that we can reach the mobile computing device technician qualification, which is a full qualification at 
and QF level four. As part of that, we uh, there is also some occupational certificates um, which are coming. That will be for laptop repairer, mobile device repairer, cell phone and e-readers, tablets, and also for your wearable accessories and peripheral. So if you have the last three, which is your laptop, your mobile device repairer, your wearable, then you have a full qualification for uh, as a mobile computing device technician. That is what's coming. So I don't know, but MICDCTA will guide us on this. We also have um, some um, other qualifications from SACWA, which we rely on for us to give the certification and hence link to our designation. So we have um, e-waste site management from uh, MICD CETA. We have the e-waste entrepreneur from WNR CETA. We have some sales and marketing qualifications from services CETA, which we will rely on. And um, we have a business and operation qualifications from CETA at WNR CETA. We also have other qualifications from other, um, other higher learning institutions, which can be other CETAs, TVETs, um, colleges, and, and uh, universities. So we don't know everything, but as long as it's linked to SACWA, it should be able to be to ours to um, um, align a certain level of certification for the person. What we are aligning now is nine streams of uh, designations. Um, so each of the designation stream uh, has a number of uh, uh, certifications and conditions as well. So we have 12 for laptops, 12 for mobile devices, like I explained um, before. Um, uh, we, we, we have 12 for wearable accessories and peripherals. And if you have the top three, you may apply for the mobile computing device uh, designation. So as you walk into at uh, one of these MNOs with a Sandra certificate, which is titled that you are a mobile computing device uh, uh, um, with a designation of a mobile computing device person, you will then um, be recognized as such. So there's 12 of them. Nine for repair centers and shops, sales, and I explained uh, before what, what it means, uh, activities that are there, admin, and so on. In terms of warehouses, we have nine. Nine also in terms of electronic waste sites. So activities that are related to the site itself. Fifteen related to electronic waste management. And eight related to entrepreneurship or business. So let's go now in terms of laptops. So uh, if you want you uh, want to be in the laptop sales, so we have from sales assistant to laptop sales manager. So you can be recognized as such. If you um, want to gain some designations in terms of laptops repairs, so we have from the laptop assistant, which is really whatever is assistant is reserved to South African citizens. I should say that uh, the purpose of that is just uh, it's people that accumulated some experience in the field and they really don't have um, qualification on that. So we 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 can we can evaluate um those those uh people the people our 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 fellow citizens that um accumulated a lot of experience they don't have any qualification so we we can start at an assistant level but they can go up to manager level so there is no um, limit it will depend on the accreditation and certification board and the assessment that they will be running um, that laptop repairs, so we have from the assistant up to a, a master technician. A master technician is really, really somebody with deep technical knowledge, uh, multi-skilled, and a lot of experience over 15 years. And um, in terms of um, mobile device professionals, um, we will have also an assistant up to a manager. Remember, mobile device for us is 
uh, cell phone, uh, uh, tablets, e-readers. That is what we call in mobile device. If you go into the sales stream, uh, that will be your uh, your six. So you can read, you can see it is from one to six. And if you go into the repair substream, you can be an, a, an assistant, you can also be a master technician. Wearable accessories and peripherals. I don't want to learn laptops. I don't want to learn mobile devices. I see an opportunity into the wearables, uh, accessories, peripherals. So you can uh, be uh, doing sales. So that will be from assistant up to a sales manager. We will be able to evaluate that. And also in terms of repairs, we will um, assess from an assistant technician level up to a master technician. Um, in terms of mobile computing device, this is a person who has a full qualification um, based on the MICT CETA qualification or an equivalent qualification from university or TVET or a, any other college. Uh, but then uh, it is linked to a SAQWA um, level of qualification. So our uh, uh, accreditation and certification board will be able to evaluate and assess if you can be in the sales as an assistant or up to a manager uh, at the top level. So in terms of um, mobile computing devices, this includes laptop. It includes everything, laptop. Um, laptops, uh, tablets, cell phones, e-readers, uh, your wearables, uh, so everything. So if you can repair that, you have the, the qualification so or the experience, so you'll be evaluated either from an assistant level up to a master technician. The repair center, I explained that um, there's a lot of things happening at our repair centers, um, so we'll be able to evaluate uh, from the administrator people that are doing administration work, we can evaluate that, value their knowledge and skills, and we can uh, assess um, from the assistant administrator, somebody who's helping an administrator uh, or a junior administrator. So somebody helping an administrator that, if it's an assistant, it's a person who does not really have a qualification at all. So that person just happened to um, maybe exit, uh, uh, I don't know, grade nine, but this person has been working there for 15 years. So, and the person is a South African citizen. So we will be able to say, you are an assistant administrator, get on with your life. You can now study further. And uh, if you have a certain level of qualification, you can be a junior or uh, just an administrator, or you can also be a repair center manager. I spoke about the, the, the structures. This is the buildings. Um, so if somebody has just, uh, I just finished uh, as an engineering uh, uh, candidate uh, at the TVET college, but I know how to build these things. So we can, uh, the, the, the accreditation and certification board will assess you and say, okay, we see that you are a junior builder or you are just a, a builder or, if a person has a number of experience, number of years of experience, that person will be then a senior repair center builder or a shop builder. The warehouse is the same. So from administrator to manager, the, the structure is the same from a junior to a senior warehouse builder. In the e-waste, um, we looked uh, in the market, we, we, we saw that there's a lot of activities, there's a lot of people working in this, in this area, and we want to also value what they're doing as administrators, so we can uh, assess a person through our accreditation and certification board and say that you are an assistant administrator, meaning a person who's just helping an administrator, or you are a, a, a up to a site manager. This is a person who's been working at uh, e-waste site for many, many years and um, either uh, accompanied with uh, a, a qualification 
or if not, um, the, the accreditation and certification board will assess that person and say, actually, your knowledge is at an experience, is at a level of a site manager, or we recommend that you go to one of our members who will just add uh, one or two skill uh, trainings for you, then we will give you a site manager uh, uh, designation. That's what we will do. And uh, in terms of structure, the site structure, we will also have builders up to senior builders. Um, in terms of where else, I'd, what did I know? Sorry. Um, now that was the, the, this one had to do with the site itself, the e-waste site. The next one is with the e-waste management. So this does not have to do with the, the site. It has to do with people that are processing some, some e-waste. So from the collector that we see every day in our streets, if a person does not have a qualification, but has accumulated a demonstrable, a traceable experience, let's say this person has been working for 10 years collecting for us, and we know him as a company, that is what he's been doing, but this person has no qualification, no training at all, except that the person has been doing this e-waste collection for us for 10 years. We'll be able to say, no, start with an assistant designation. The person will be tall and happy to be called an assistant collector, recognized by our uh, national education framework. And then that can go from there to people that have some level of education, of qualification, to junior collector, to collectors. So there's different levels of requirements in terms of uh, qualification and experience. Uh, it can be a senior collector. Um, junior preprocessor, you need some technical um, uh, qualification and the preprocessor. So these are the, the people that it's actually at the level of some technician level who can do uh, uh, intelligent or semi-intelligent uh, dismantlement or selection or such type of activities. And the senior preprocessors, they can be people that really can supervise others, they can run uh, uh, sites and so on. But this is really technical work and uh, you can have supervisors and also managers. We have a lot of them already doing this work. We will just evaluate through our accreditation and certification board and then uh, award those certificates. Um, that, is, that is the people that are managing the e-waste. And we have a lot of dealers uh, that are actually, uh, they're not collecting, they're not running sites, but they're just uh, selling. So they have uh, uh, accumulated skills in uh, selling e-waste or making deals around e-waste, connecting people, connecting companies, uh, drawing margins, drawing some commissions here and there, and, and negotiating deals. So those are in the sales a stream, uh, or they can also be permanently employed uh, uh, in companies, but their role is to sell. Uh, so we will have from sales assistant, uh, people with no qualification at all, but uh, accumulated uh, experience up to um, our sales managers. Then we have the last one, which is um, uh, the last one, which is uh, entrepreneurial uh, uh, designations. So we have uh, people that will uh, venture themselves into mobile computing device entrepreneurship. Uh, they can be assistant or they can be up to senior entrepreneurs. These are people that have a certain level of qualification. Um, as uh, from uh, either the CITAS or even uh, universities. And uh, we can also have in the e-waste site, uh, we have uh, people that are entrepreneurs. So they're running various operations for the shops and, and uh, activities uh, up to a senior entrepreneur. Then we go to accreditations. Accreditations is um, similar to what we've seen with uh, 
with uh, with uh, with uh, individuals. It is uh, recognitions that we will give to companies uh, depending on their activities. It can be um, uh, uh, it can be a, either a shop or it will be a a a. a it will be a shop or uh, e-waste site or any other type of operation linked to the, the, the industry that we have. So these accreditations will also run through our, uh, our accreditation and certification board. And we will also um, have classifications the same way. And also people will be uh, assessed uh, in the same way. Now, we will also need uh, another type of uh, partners who will be assessing these companies because we can't go everywhere. So we will recruit partners that will be our extension to say, please uh, uh, go to uh, such a shop in Kwandlangezwa and uh, and assess for us this person based on this criteria uh, as a member of Sandra, a service provider, uh, uh, a member of Sandra, a person or a company should be able to extend that service locally there and then give us a report so that we give that person a certain level of, uh, 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 um, of recognition and they, they will have a plate uh, to say that they are, the, the site is a, a recognized site uh, as a as a member of Sandra and a, a a certain level of expertise in the same way it can be in the mobile repair it can be in the e-waste uh, it can be in the entrepreneurial streams that we discussed uh, earlier I think for for the sake of time I see uh, our uh, is pressing me so I, I think that will be all for our accreditation and certification. Um, I don't know, uh, back to you, uh, Auntie Pam, uh, uh, so that we can continue with the process. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, um, MD. If we were not in a virtual meeting, I would have said, can we all stand up and stretch or just have a natural break? But I suppose that happens naturally wherever you are in your surroundings. I would then take this opportunity then to allow um, Goku to come in. Now, I don't know, should we, because we have a Q&A session, are we then going to just park all of this for the Q&A session, all the questions? Or can we just deal with this with the first presentation of Loisa, or we just do all at the Q and A? Can you just guide them, Mark? Um, I think uh, we, we can um, hear from um, MICT Sita because they had time constraints. If you you can fit them now, it's fine. If not, uh, we can go to the Q and A and then come back to MICT Sita. Google. How would you like this? Thank you, Program Director. Let's take the questions. Okay, Thanks. thank you so much for allowing us to do that. I may not see all the other hands, but I would like uh, the participants, or rather between David and Mark, if you can assist me. I want us to start with uh, Louisa's presentation, the chair's presentation to ask questions from that presentation. Thank you so much. We may we, we may have to reload it for, for people just to remind them of where they were in terms of the Q&A, just for people to say this is a slide that spoke about one, two, or three. We're going to, re we're going to ask, request that we get that assistance. Loiso, are you ready to take any questions and to the participants? You can raise your questions. Thank you. Yeah, I was born ready and Pam. <laughs> yeah, well. 
please help me if you see any hands. Thank you. There is a moment to see Twala, you can go. Can somebody please allow the mic for Ngatisi and uh, Marshall Nelson? Um, In fact, can you allow all the mics now, uh, David and all Mark? Because I just they did that deliberately because of the need to disrupt the uh, for, for some reason, I can't. Okay. <laughs> He's muted uh, and I can't. Nelson? Mr. Marshall? Yes, can I speak? Yes. Although your mic is Marshall. showing. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay. My name is Marshall Nelson uh, from Youth Media Movement based in Mitchell's Plain, Cape Town. Firstly, I want to thank the organizers for this wonderful event. And, and, and it's really important because mobile devices and other electronic devices, there's always a bigger control to it. I don't want to mention the names, but where I stay, there's a chunk of people that controls that particular industry. When it comes to fixing mobile devices, fixing laptops, if you can't take it to the agent itself, which is gonna cost you a lot of money, there's no one local. So that was 10 tick boxes. Thank you very much. My question I wanted to also ask is that, hence that we know that yes, cell phones, um, you know, uh, electronic devices, we have um, laptops, we have uh, um, TVs, which is your flat screen TVs. Then also in the space where I play, which is called the drones. Now those are the same devices. It's got same uh, electronic components. And that becomes also of a big question mark of who will, re who will be uh, assisting us so that we can also have that kind of support that we are now doing for the um, electronics and the cell phones. Thank you, my leaders. Uh, maybe let's also allow Mnetisi to ask the question and then I'll answer both. Mnetisi, please go ahead. Good morning, Tim. Uh, let me just take this opportunity first and foremost to just thank uh, uh, Sandra for the initiative that they embarked on. Uh, I think this is a very critical move uh, in the empowerment of uh, South Africans in general, but more in particular, the, the youth. Uh, so mine is along the lines of um, ensuring that the opportunity that is being created um, places South Africans at the forefront is there anything that we are planning on doing in as far as ring fencing uh, the market, so to say, uh, so that the South Africans uh, who are already on a, a back foot in terms of playing or participating in this space are not further disadvantaged um, by the fact that those who have been in the space for a while are the ones that probably have got the equipment, the setup, et cetera, et cetera, to take the advantage, uh, yes, to take advantage of this opportunity even before uh, South African players can even wake up to this, uh, to this uh, fact. So, yeah, I just wanted to find out if there's anything that we're doing to protect the market and drink first for South Africans. Thanks. Thank you, colleagues. So I'll start with the 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 part which we had no question from uh, Mr. Nelson. Um, one thing we are going to be coming to the to the Western Cape. Um, if I'm not mistaken, um, we are talking to the college, um, Cape Town College, um, and really the target uh, for us there it's, it's it's the areas around the Cape Flats um, to be training um, quite a lot of youths around the the Cape Flats areas. 
um, for to to deal with some of the other social problems that you might know. I wouldn't want to dwell with them. Um, so we do. We will now start to also focus on the Western Cape. I'm originally from Worcester, so Western Cape is very close to my heart. Um, on the second question, yes, as I said in my presentation, um, the type of qualification that we 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 we, we train is an electronics qualification focused on mobile device and a mobile device is really anything that has a battery that you can carry with we might at some point need to have a focus on drones because they provide other things uh, your optical and the sensors that come with them but as it stands now for the actual drone itself the type of qualification that we do um, will will cover a drone. A person would be able to reasonably fix a drone. However, drones are getting more and more complicated. I'm aware that there's a pilot qualification that we're dealing with in terms of drone. Now as MI City CETA. For those who do not know, I'm also a board member of MI City CETA. Um, and But we are going to have a special focus on drone. But to answer your, your question direct, it does include um, 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 a person should be able to fix uh, drones as well. And uh, on the on the question from um, the second question, yes, one of the things that we want to do, uh, obviously, we have to start somewhere, and these things go um, um, in stages. Once we, we we consolidate the certification and the membership base, one of the things that we go, we're going to do, we are going to push for some sort of legislation uh, of the industry and control of the industry, as you suggest, because there are other things which we did not talk to. Um, there are other issues of, 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 of criminal activities being done by uh, phones that are not registered, um, by bogus foreign nationals who would come and um, 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 unlock blocked phones which might have been stolen, um, and things like that, so that phones are not being traced. As part of that, uh, a part of the credibility that we bring um, with Sandra is to ensure there's a code of conduct for our members not to do things that are illegal. As you might know, um, uh, most of the law enforcement agencies work, work very closely. Most of the crimes are solved by use of, mo of, of, of uh, tracking uh, mobile devices where the calls have been made and, 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 and that's a big area of focus for us. So you are correct, it's, it's, it's exactly in our plans. From the onset, we did consider the criminality that can be perpetuated by people who have no uh, um, sort of uh, any lineage to South Africa, uh, and therefore we're looking at it. But obviously, we had to start somewhere. We had to have this uh, um, get to this point. From there, advocating for the use of South Africans just by pure marketing. But we are not going to stop there. We're going to lobby parliament. We're going to lobby political parties um, and the executive to make sure that we can put some legislations around who can do this type of work because it's very important to the safety of South Africa and citizens at large. I think if I'm not mistaken, I've covered both questions. Uh, Mark, can you just confirm in which um, um, college, are we going to be running the 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 next uh, the the first Cape Town program that we're running? It's College of Cape Town, Chair. College of Cape Town. Yes, so we will be going there, Mr. Nelson. You can check that out. It will be on our website when we're starting the recruitment. Um, sorry, sorry that I have to jump. I just wanted to make sure that the body that we have, have established, the Sandra, also look at local training providers like ourselves, because yes, Cape Town College, Pauls Bay College, all these colleges is nice, but it doesn't necessarily say that they are doing the work on the ground, because currently right now, everyone running to Cape Town College, Pauls Bay College, it's good, but is the results what we want? And the local training providers like ourselves that is on the ground in the communities, we are always being excluded. Please, can we also look after them? Thank you, my leader. Can, can can I suggest that we take it off the meeting? Um, uh, David, my PA David is on the call. If you can just drop David your contact details and uh, let's have a chat about uh, what you do and how can we partner with you. As I said, for me, the Cape Flats is a very important area um, and not just for the training, but also to deal with other social issues 
which I do not want to talk about now. So David will take your details or you give your details to David and then we can talk about how we can partner together in the KFLES area. Would that be okay? Okay, sorted. All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, Marshall has shared his, his, his mobile number on the group. I think uh, David will actually continue with those conversations beyond this meeting. Now, I just wanted to check. Oh, no, you did answer the question that Marshall had put on the chat. I'm just wanting to check on the other chats, but between you, uh, Chair, and Mark, let us just allow Mark then to respond to the ones on the chat, and you can respond to the ones that are made verbally. Can we get any other hands, please? Mark, you can respond to the question that says, in terms of training providers, I believe there are very few who are accredited to offer mobile device training. Are there any plans to assist in train the trainer? You can hit that one, please, uh, Loisa. Yes, um, as our, I did explain it a little bit um, uh, previously, is that um, we, we, we work in partnerships. So what we've done is we've developed the qualification uh, together with MICTCITA, or we assisted in MICTCITA developing the qualification. So the trainer would have to go to MICTCITA and accredit themselves for that qualification. So when Mark was talking about us accrediting our partners, so once you are an MICTCITA accredited on the qualification that we help develop, we will recognize your qualification. If you are our member, we are able to then take even the letters that you would have trained um, and we are able to then uh, accredit them as well. So yes, there is that process, but that process goes via the MICTCITA. The trainer would have to accredit Gugu when the, she speaks. She will explain when that qualification will be ready. If I'm not mistaken, I think early next year, a very early in the first uh, uh, quarter of next year, it will be available for training providers to be able to accredit it themselves. So that qualification, we will then recognize that qualification because we also worked with MICTCITA in developing the very same qualification. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. In the absence of questions for Loiso's presentation, can we then allow for questions on Mark's presentation? Thank you. Please assist me in looking out for the hand. Uh, in the absence of questions from Mark's presentations, which I assume was very clear, can we then check if Gugu is ready for her presentation? Gugu, if you are ready, can you please go right ahead, my sister? Thank you. Thank you, um, Program Director. Good morning, everyone. Um, uh, greetings uh, to the Sandra uh, leadership and um, all protocol observed. I will be taking you through the presentation. On my presentation, I will cover um, the qualifications that have been spoken about earlier. I'll also touch on the um, a relationship that we have with this professional body, Sandra. Um, and conclude with uh, the list of qualifications that has been developed to date. The MICT CETA is one of the authority um, uh, sector education training authority that have been established in terms of the Skills Development Act we are an authority mandated to look after um, skills development across um, various sectors. Um, in the country, we have about 21 CITES, and each CITA is um, 
attached to certain um, sectors of economy. As MICTC, we are attached to these um, five subsectors, which is advertising, film and electronic media, electronics, information technology, and uh, telecommunication. These um, subsectors um, has employers uh, or companies that are operating across the five subsectors. And in terms of the um, legislation requirement on skills development act, uh, as well as the skills development levies act, these companies or employers are required to pay 1% of their uh, total wage bill uh, to SARS. Um, uh, just uh, to present to you a picture of all these employers that we interact with uh, across the five subsectors that I've mentioned. You see uh, the telecommunication is the biggest uh, sector, followed by the telecommunication, uh, electronics, um, uh, advertising, and uh, film and electronic media. Now, Sandra, as a professional body uh, with um, a, a, an intention to work with all the SMEs or the companies that are, are in the mobile repair uh, or in the telephone repairs or the mobile device repairs, those companies will fall, if they register with MICT CETA, they will then fall under electronics. And if they uh, also register with uh, SARS, they will then um, be allocated uh, to the MICT CETA. And then this picture that you see, the 14% will then increase. As it stands now, electronics is one of the smallest sector that we are looking after. Hence, we have partnered with um, Sandra to ensure that we grow um, uh, this economy um, or this part of the economic sector. Now, since the advent of um, 4IR in the country, you will all know that we started embracing this 4IR around uh, 2018 as a country, uh, followed by what um, has happened at the national level. I'm not going to talk more on this, but just to um, uh, outline or mention that the report that was presented by these commissioners um, or these uh, presidential commissioners. As in my city center, we have adopted um, a certain um, or, or part of the, 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 the report, and we are then implementing those um, recommendations that have been um, outlined on that report. Now, at the CETA level in 2019, we followed the same approach that uh, the national or the DCDT or the, president, uh, president, the Office of the President followed. We have invited, um, we sent out a call where we are inviting the industry uh, uh, for people that will um, participate on what we call the 4IR advi uh, Advisory uh, Committee or the MICT CETA 4IR Advisory Committee. That was established in, in 2019. Um, that advisory committee was established with four work streams, which is research, education, policy, and labor. In the very same year, this um, 4IR Advisory Committee was then launched um, officially by the then Minister of um, DCDT, Ms. Stella Ndabin. The Advisory Committee, together with um, the MICT CETA 4IR um, Division, was then tasked by the MICT CETA Board to um, develop uh, the Integrated Digital Skills Strategy, which is the strategy that is currently governing the um, MICT CETA 4IR Division, and also um, all the activities that the MICT CETA in line or in relation with the 4IR has been implementing. In the very same year, the Department of Higher Education and Training, which is our principal, they have also mandated MICT CETA to lead on 4IR. And for us to um, lead and also to respond to these um, 4IR imperative or the changes, we needed to have um, a, a guiding uh, document, hence the development of this strategy, which we are now implementing to date. 
The strategy allows us to identify um, uh, industry um, uh, or strategic uh, partners that we will work with them to implement um, or to, to first to develop the um, the 4IR or programs that are 4IR or also or responsive to um, the 4IR. And um, they also um, allow, the strategy allows us to um, uh, implement this uh, 4IR initiative with the strategic partners that we have um, signed MOUs with them. Now, Sandra is one of the strategic partner that MICT CETA has signed an MOU back in 2020. Now, when we had a discussion with Sandra prior um, the signing of the MOU, we have found out that Sandra, the Sandra vision, it coincide with uh, the, um, the vision of the MICT CETA uh, 4IR to ensure that um, we, we we develop program that are responsive and program that will assist the economy um, uh, uh, to respond or to address the uh, unemployment and also uh, exposing our young people uh, to the different technologies and support the innovation that our young people um, are innovating. Now, uh, I'm happy to share with you that we have uh, signed the MOU with Sandra and the MOU has been in existence. And since we have partnered with Sandra, to date we have uh, piloted um, uh, the Sandra qualification um, while it's still in the process of being accredited with both QCTO and SAQA. And uh, we have trained uh, to date about 440 uh, students or learners or learners that have benefited on the Sandra uh, training that has been uh, supported by the MICT Center. In bridging the digital divide and creating a job there was a great need um, that we as MICT CETA, we position ourselves uh, and develop qualifications that are responsive, as I've indicated earlier. To date, we have developed about uh, 38 qualifications. We have embarked on this journey since 2020, and Sandra has been that partner that has supported uh, with, uh, supported this um, initiative, and some of um, uh, the members uh, or some of the attendees that are here, uh, I've noted Marshall and some, they are a whole lot of people who have been part of this exciting journey, supporting the MICT CETA, developing um, these qualifications. So these are the qualifications that has been developed um, uh, since 2020. Uh, in 2020, we have developed about 11 qualifications, these 11 qualifications. Then in 2021, we continued uh, developing qualification. That's where we started, um, uh, we, we have developed these uh, uh, four uh, qualifications or the one qualification mobile uh, computing technician uh, device which came out with four um, areas of specialization or uh, um, a skills program uh, that is a, a laptop repairer, wearables, accessories and peri uh, peripheral repairer. So these qualifications, some of them have already been endorsed by QCTO and SAQA. Uh, we have noted some of the um, industry or the uh, SDPs, skills development providers that have um, applied for accreditation because these are occupational qualifications. So the accreditation, it is through the QCTO. So most of the um, SDPs who were on the forefront have already applied and obtained the accreditation through the QCTO and they are now implementing these qualifications. So we did not only develop um, full qualifications, full occupational qualifications, but also skills programs. So these here um, are the list of the skills programs that we have since developed. And these is programs, they are also um, accredited uh, by the 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 SAC, by QCTO, and those who wish to apply for accreditation, the these skills programs are readily available.
The progress in terms of the um, the e-waste and mobile repairs, which are the two qualifications um, that are, are linked or associated with some uh, with Sandra, these qualifications were developed and they have gone through the public comments. Now, what does it mean? It means that um, the MICT CETA have um, completed the development and they've gone through all the verification processes of, of from the QCTO, and then um, they then we uh, put on a public comment uh, or gazetted for a period of 21 days for a public to comment on the qualifications. And um, we have not received or QCTO did not receive any comments from the public. And then these com uh, qualifications were then recommended um, for um, registration to SACWA. They are now at the final stage uh, of um, uh, the qualification development or the process of um, uh, recognizing uh, the qualifications. So we are told that um, the outcome of these qualifications, it, it's between March and uh, January and March 2024. So by April uh, 2024, we will have the fully um, accredited or fully registered qualifications on these two qualifications. We therefore urge SDPs that are here uh, to ensure or to be on the lookout so that you start the process of obtaining accreditation. Thank you. This brings me to an end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kuku, for that presentation. I really appreciate it. Now, there were some questions on the chat, but we just wanted to get clarity from the chair whether we are also going to engage uh, questions that relate to, the, to, to drones. But the chair can then lead us in that because this question is also interlinked or rather directed to MICT CETA. But before we do that, we just want direction from the chair. Please, okay, Rizzo. Um, preferably, I think I, I wouldn't want to go deep into drones because that's not what uh, Sandra currently does, except for the part that um, the, the qualification that we have um, would get people to fix drones from a, from an electronics perspective. Um, as I said in the previous um, um, response, it, it, there, there is a drone council. There's other partners which I would not want to step on their toes um, in the moment uh, that deal with drones, but it is an area that I think needs its own special focus. Drones are getting um, quite a lot of use cases in different areas if you talk um, about in different industries in terms of the verticals. So I think it would need its own type Sandra value chain uh, process, especially on the usage part of the drones, um, uh, also from manufacturing all the way. So I don't want us to focus on the on the drones uh, per se, because it is a huge industry on its own, um, which is growing uh, immensely. But as so far as the qualification of the drones is, is, is there, they can take advantage of the presence of, 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 of Google in the meeting if they want to ask anything as so far as the qualifications and, and that we are doing. I think Google will be more qualified to answer those. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you for that direction, uh, Chair. Can we have hands if there are any? Uh, related to MICT CT and the presentation. All other questions are permitted except to say when are we getting our grant? Over to you. Auntie Pam, I think there is a question in the chat which um, which uh, 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 Google can respond to already, which is I don't know if I should read it or she can see. Good day. I'm currently in drone industry and there is RMT, Remote and Maintenance Technician, which uh, which is a course accredited by SACA. I think it's the, the South African, uh, the air aviation uh, body. 
uh, that is SACA, I think. And um, the courses established here, is it separate from the that one, the RMT course offered uh, in conjunction with uh, the course established here? Can it be uh, um, in conjunction or separate? Miss, Miss uh, Gugu, can you attend to that, please? Thanks, um, uh, Dr. Ma. Yes, um, the the course is slightly different um, in a sense that the qualification that MICT CETA have developed, uh, it's uh, NQF aligned. Um, uh, and yet this one from SACA, it's not NQF aligned. However, when developing this qualification, um, the SACA uh, members or delegates were part of the development. So some of the content or most of the content that assisted in developing the qualifications um, were coming from uh, SACA. So we can have a look and, 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 and link and, and just check to say what are the missing uh, link uh, from the two courses or the two qualifications. But um, what makes the CETA qualification different uh, is that it is um, uh, NQF aligned and um, endorsed by the South African Qualification Authority, which is the body that is mandated to endorse qualification in South Africa. Thanks, Lerato. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I hope Lerato is covered. Can we move then to any other questions that are directed to Google in relation to her presentation? Can uh, colleagues please assist me with hands that I may not see? Thank you. Going one. Thank there are no you so hands. Much. There are no hands, Antipa. Okay, I do realize that. Thank you so much uh, for your presentation. We really appreciate it. I just wanted to check now whether our next speaker uh, is 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 ready now to give us a presentation. It is Drew Fig. Is Drew Fig on the call? I tried checking if he was on the call. If if he can, if he is ready, can he please give us a presentation on apps, websites, and resources? Thank you, Drew. Can we ask David to confirm whether Drew is on the call because I didn't see his name unless he has renamed himself, but has he confirmed participation in this? Can you please give us clarity, David? Thank you. The name says Speaker Drew Fig presents apps, websites, and resources. Drew Fig. Hello, Auntie Pam. Drew is not here. Can we just go on? Thank you. Thank you. That's the clarity I, I was seeking. Thank you so much, Mark. In the absence of that last presenter, I'm going to request our chairperson to give the vote of thanks to the more than 101 participants on this call. And he must also mention that lunch is served in the building next door, if we can just walk across. 
Thank you so much. <laughs> You're out of order and them. Colleagues, um, for me, um, I'm, I'm very thankful. Um, there's a lot of people in this um, group who have worked all the journey with us. And, and I think we are now um, at the stages where some of the issues that have come um, are almost done so that we can realize really what we're trying to do. Um, not just for the learners, but for South Africa as a whole. As we all know, um, we have uh, the triple challenges in South Africa of unemployment um, and, and, and the others. And, and, and this is really what this is about. It's, it's, to, it's to deal with the issue of unemployment, economic growth and social issues. And, 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 um, and the support that we've received, not just from the government departments, but from the partners, learners, and 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 uh, other um, uh, entities, and for me, it's just to say thank you. Um, and the amount of people that have come to the meeting, it's encouraging to us. And yeah, um, I look forward to seeing as much participation from all of us in just getting to um, the end of this journey. There's no end really, but to just make sure that we can get this vision seen through, so that it can benefit South Africa. Um, and make sure that we deal with the issue of jobs that we have. And hopefully one day we can start having devices uh, fully manufactured in South Africa. And for me, this is just a journey. It starts with the repair, but the whole aim is to look at the entire value chain and make sure we can start doing things ourselves. Thank you very much. I see that uh, Kenneth is asking for the attendance register. Um, I am sure we can pull that off from 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 um, um, from teams, and we would be able to do that. Uh, Mr. Marshall, do you want to add? I want to say thank you very much on behalf of all of us in this group. I, I'm, I'm truly honored, and I'm sure that my, my comrades here are also truly honored for this brave step that you guys took, and we are in full support that's why we are from the start of the meeting till the end of the meeting still with you just to show you how much we love you thank you guys god bless you and a blessed new year we're looking forward for 2024 and to the MICTC and to all the players guys we love you no theo that's 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 heartwarming thank you very much mr marshall yes those who want the recording it can be shared and those who want the the attendance register I am not sure from a Popia Act whether we are able to share the entire one. I will check if we are. I will then um, ask David to also share for those who request. But the recording, um, since nobody um, objected, I'm assuming it can be shared. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you very much to um, our team. Um, I think this was quite a great, and, and Mr. Marshall have said, I've noticed we've just had over 95 uh, um, uh, people in attendance and none of them dropped. Instead, it kept, kept on going up. Uh, we appreciate and let's let's yeah, get the work done. Thank you, colleagues, and uh, uh, good, uh, goodbye. And the lunch, I don't know. <laughs> no, thank you so much. Thank and you. I just need to correct the steps because I screen munched. I, I, I screen munched at 101. So thank you so much that we actually hit the 100 mark and and beyond. Thank you so, so much. Uh, have a good, good, good festive season.